Hi everyone, it's Maggie here with vlog number 12. And so, as you can tell, I have had some sleep. So, <laughs> last night was my first actual, like, six-hour pass out. I actually feel amazing right now, um, which is good because today is Thursday, which is the day I go and I teach games and learn games with the retail staff at my work. And so I am excited to show them all the fun things I brought home from Gen Con, and I get to show off all these like fun, cool things I learned. Um, the biggest one, uh, well, first off, um, Tasty Minstrel gave us their suite of the micro games. So those little coinage, burgu, this town ain't big enough, those type of um, little games are gonna be like five, ten dollars. Uh, I'm excited to show my staff this, but I'm sad that I don't have any to sell because I think Coinage for us is going to be an easy add-on. Like, I don't know. I think we could sell so many of them, and I know that Taste of Minstrel was considering doing all of those sales through their website, so we'll see if they're still looking at putting them into stores or not. Um, but the big thing is last night we got our next play of oh, Imperial Settlers in. Uh, so I feel like now that I've played a few times, I can talk a little bit about it and the differences and my opinions uh, between that and 51st State. Because 51st State was uh, what the game was based off of. This is a retooled, much more open, much easier to learn version. So 51st State was restrictive and you built this engine and you got a couple points, but what you were trying to do is build the engine that got 33 points in one turn, so there was no cumulative score. The concepts behind 51st State were solid. Like They were just really neat. Every card was used in one of three ways. Each faction liked different ways of using cards, but you could edit that through smart play. Just amazing, cool ideas. But no one understood it. And it, you couldn't sell it to the everyday. It was only like uber gamers and people that were willing to tear through the rules and kind of get it. So Imperial Settlers is a kinder, fuzzier, gentler version, um, though the gameplay is still very heavily combo based, it's very, the card evaluation is more difficult than I assumed it would be, and this one can sell to anyone, it's about farming, it's got cool little apple meeples, um, so some of the improvements he made there are amazing. I will say 51st State is still probably my preferred method but I'm going to be able to take this and teach it in probably 10 minutes to anyone. So I guess it wins on that front. Um, for those of you who have never played, so I'm just going to describe Imperial Settlers real quick. It's, it's faction-based, so asymmetrical a little bit. You In the base box here we have the Romans, the Barbarians, the Japanese, and the Egyptians. And the Romans and the Barbarians are aggressive forces, so they build up their tableau trying to destroy other peoples and the Egyptians and the Japanese are more passive where they just try and keep other people away so that they can build their little uh, like the Egyptians make a little coin engine they mine for a bunch of gold and sell it off for victory points and the Japanese um, uh, they harvest a lot of food they keep that around until they find a couple of key cards that allow them to sacrifice food and deals for victory points um, so the game is played over five rounds. You draw cards from your faction's deck as well as drafting cards out of a common deck that's just a little more vanilla and has just nicer production buildings and stuff. Um, there's upsides and downsides. Faction cards are usually a little more powerful and worth more victory points. Um, common cards can be more useful. They usually produce more goods. Um, but if you don't get through enough of your faction deck, you might not be able to find those key cards that allow you to turn what you've built into victory points. If you don't find one of those, you're not going to be able to win the game. However, if you build those cards too early, you leave them vulnerable to other people attacking them. Because most factions, except for the Egyptians, I can pay resources in the game, they're called raise tokens, to destroy your stuff. So they're either used to discard cards from your own hand or to destroy something on an opponent's board. The Japanese have kind of built-in defense mechanisms, but other than that, everything's up for grabs. 
Um, the last night the Egyptians won, uh, but by two points, barely to the Romans. And the player playing the Romans swears he had me. Um, so he he thinks that one one key card happened, and uh, I disagree <laughs> because if I win, I'm taking my win. Um, the Japanese, both times we've played it so far, um, have not done very well uh, without those couple key cards. Like, I played and I made a bunch of deals and I never found the thing that allowed me to sacrifice deals for points. Uh, Brian played it last night, made all the food in the world, probably at 20 food, and never got the card that allowed you to sacrifice goods for points. He, in the last round, got the one card where you could put resources on it for up to 10 points, so he got 10 points out of that card, but he was probably 20 points behind the other two. Uh, just wonderful little game. Um, I'd say maybe it feels a little bit long. Uh, the the draft is what slows it down, but I, I think I was playing with very analytical people, so the selection process and looking at cards and looking at the discard I'll take a little bit longer than I would have expected, but I think that was more just that we had never played before and we didn't know the cards well enough to just blindly being selected. Uh, once we know the cards, it'll be much quicker. Uh, over, so I, I did, oh, by the way, uh, you should be able to see this in local stores for, <laughs> I'm laughing because none of you guys sh shop locally, but if you do go to your local friendly game store, um, they will be available in the next couple days. I am expecting mine on Friday. So you may want to call and reserve one if you can. They look like they've sold out their first print run. Fantastic. Congratulations. But you're very much going to want to pick this up now because otherwise you're waiting until probably Christmas time before they get another shipment in. So... Uh, that's all for now. I hope you guys had a fantastic week. I hope I have some Mysterium uh, reviews for you soon. I've just got to convince a couple of friends to play it with me. <laughs> um, but that's all for now. Bye!